welcome to another episode of the Government Transformation Show, a podcast for public sector changemakers. I'm Sam Birchall, Senior Journalist here at Government Transformation Magazine, and my guests today are Robin Satura, Field Chief Technology Officer at Databricks, and its public sector lead, Pritish Patel. So we're going to be having a conversation about responsible data sharing, a topic that Databricks will be co-hosting at our Government Data Summit at the end of March. We discuss where the biggest opportunities are today for government organisations when it comes to responsible data sharing, what challenges there are around this and how we can leverage technology to really drive data trustworthiness and adoption. So there's lots to discuss. Let's jump in. So Robin and Pritesh, welcome to the Government Transformation Show. Great to have you join us for this conversation. Great to be here, Sam. Thank Great you. Stuff. And it's uh, it's always a pleasure to hear what Data Bro- Databricks has got going on and particularly excited to hear some of your insights on today's topic about responsible data sharing. But for the benefit of our listeners who may not be aware of what you or Databricks do, could you kick things off perhaps by explaining a bit about your background, your role, your areas of expertise? And um, Robin, do you want to go first? Sure, thank you. So Robin Sutara, I am currently a field CTO with Databricks, primarily responsible for helping organizations think about their overall data strategy and how the power of the lake house through data breaks can enable and empower them to leverage their data more effectively across their organization. I've only been with data breaks for about seven months. Prior to that, I spent 23 years with Microsoft, the last 15 of those in various sort of data roles, actually helping Microsoft with their digital and data transformation, uh, culminating my career there as the chief data officer for Microsoft UK. Wow, great. And Pritesh, for you? Yeah. Yeah, so um, Prisesh Patel, I lead our public sector business here at Databricks. I've been with us for two years now, helping our customers uh, get the most out of modern data practices using Databricks. Prior to that, I've, I've spent, gosh, over 15 years in public sector working with a number of transformative technology projects. Most recently, prior to this, helping customers really adopt the power of cloud infrastructure and the abilities that that provides. And within Databricks, taking that further, really the democratization and opportunity to adopt more modern data approaches around modern data engineering, data science, and machine learning and AI. So it's a really exciting time at the moment. Great. And uh, it's great between the both of you have lots of great experience on on data sharing. So really excited to to dig into this topic with you. But I want to start by setting off the scene. So at Databricks, you're in a really fortunate position, obviously, of of being able to, to see the current landscape where kind of government are with their data data sharing and um, kind of given some of your engagement and conversations with with people in this area. Um, so so Robin, perhaps I'll, I'll come to you first, but how big an opportunity for improvement is there for government organisations with regards to data sharing? So I guess, how would you characterise the, the current state and then perhaps the, the desired future state? Yeah, I think data sharing represents a huge opportunity for government and sort of pr- private and public entities. If you think about the power of data and being able to unlock lock new data sets and new sort of innovation that really comes with organizations being able to share their data. And I think we've made significant progress in this space. If I look at pre-pandemic, for example, it would have been unheard of for things like health data to be shared across government entities or even with retailers or or uh, more private entities. But I think it's been, we've made significant progress, I think, since then with people realizing sort of the power that sharing that type of data data really can have when it comes to delivering better services for citizens across the board. So super exciting times. I think we've definitely seen some progress, but there's a lot more opportunity to go. And I guess kind of given your work with different government organizations, and you said yourself, you're seeing a lot of of progress since the pandemic. Um, What trends are you really seeing with regards to thinking around data sharing? And and what do you think really is driving maturity in this at the moment? I know many organizations think of data sharing as perhaps a top level case capability, but kind of, is that is that the right approach? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so just to come in on that, Sam, I'm, I'm seeing things from both angles, I guess, right? So the conversation around mach- harnessing machine learning, AI, and advanced data techniques is happening at the most senior levels of government, and how to do that responsibly is is, is keeping some people awake up at night, uh, but also making sure that they can uh, leverage the power, the value, the opportunity, right? They, this government especially is, is all about how, how do you capture that opportunity? But at the same time, we're seeing within departments there's a, there's a move towards let's say a rationalization standardization this this element of creating data standards uh, is coming both centrally from within government and across um single government departments because ultimately they want to work more efficiently right they want to more work more effectively and efficiently and when they're 
of this heterogeneous environments that happen, it, it can be quite um, a large task to manage. And that, that task grows as data exponentially grows. So there's, there's that will from within departments, from cross data professionals within those departments, as well as top down to say, well, okay, we want to leverage the power of the most modern data practices. And the reality is you need to fuse the two together to really get the, the most value out of that data. Then furthermore, if you look at historically a lot of government departments, you know, they've merged together. Uh, if you see with Bayes recently, you know, split into various departments, right? So that organizational design, um, both merger and acquisition, similar to kind of what you see in private enterprise, is meaning that people need to share that data across those government departments more and more. Um, mm -hmm. But how to do that and how to do it effectively, and again, back to a, a level of standardization, is, is is being thought through much more now than it has done in the past, I think. Absolutely. And, and we'll, we'll definitely dig in a bit more into those standards later on in the conversation. Um, but I guess kind of, kind of linked to that, but thinking again, kind of more broadly, about how data sharing can, can really help drive forward a lot of the government initiatives at the moment. Um, either of kind of Robin Pratesh, either is free, feel free to answer, but what would you say the role of um, data sharing technology is in driving those kind of government-wide initiatives, for example, like the, the UK's data, uh, national data strategy? Yeah, I think it comes down to what Pratesh was talking about earlier. You know, how do you have the foundations in place on a modern data platform that's not going to necessarily lock you into a single vendor? If, as you think about mergers and acquisitions and sort of the collapsing and div division of these organizations across the government is going to become more and more foundational that they think about future proofing that ecosystem and creating the foundations that are going to take them into the future. And how you do that really is around sort of open and standards and mm -hmm. making sure that you have those things in place that allow you to integrate as the, the entities continue to evolve over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've spoken about the kind of current states, we've spoken about why data, sh data sharing is, is so important. For, for government strategies right now. But I want to turn now and have a look at some of the more practical steps government organisations can take towards effective data sharing um, and perhaps also some of the challenges in getting that right. So in what ways can government organisations kind of share data simply and securely? And, and perhaps maybe you can give us some examples of how Databricks works with governments on this. Yeah, so I, I, I can come in on that. So, so the, there is elements around making more open protocol standards is, is at the heart of how we believe it should be done. Uh, making sure that those, let's say, formats and, and protocols easily understood by both the data provider and the recipient is vitally important. Past what we can do, there, there is needs for, and this is happening on a more, more mature, ba maturing basis around those data trusts. So the legal agreement which exists across government departments, citizens may not be aware, but this is quite important for the technology aspect to come in thereafter on top of the process. So I think those, those legal agreements are maturing as there has been more needs in recent times with crises that have occurred um, and also long-standing agreements that exist between these departments. So going back to, again, it's, it's that then that technology element of being an enabler uh, through protocols where, you know, we have uh, an element around using parquets and open file format. Um, we see a lot of communities within the open source uh, side of things driving these interoperable standards um, and it's something we want to actively support. So I think that's going to be keys. It's the building up of these data communities and communication of what is being on offer to interchange and interoperate. I think the other thing you have to keep in mind as well is sort of people and process. So we have a great technology that sort of empowers the organization, but each one of these government departments needs to rethink the, the traditional ways that they've processed these types of data or the scenarios. So if you think of things like claiming benefits or obtaining health care, etc., there are old ways that they have done these things. And so rethinking how do you empower the, the providers in each of these government entities to deliver better services services for citizens by rethinking how they do their job and unlocking new data assets that they didn't have access to before to deliver better services. There's there's just nothing but benefit, I think, when you think about, you know, what that can really uncover when you think about the power of the technology and now how do we empower the people and, and rethink the processes around those to, to enable all those things. It's Absolutely. a great point, Robin. If, if you look at the top 75 communicated digital user journeys that are, are in need for transformation or, or of top priority from the cabinet office perspective they've gone, gone in class subclass them per department but if you if you look at how those user journeys could be enriched they probably can be enriched by data from different government departments and then that will make that transformation of that digital journey priority priority digital journey even more i suppose enriching for the citizen mm -hmm. absolutely and um i guess a core concern for for the government's 
organisations, and it's certainly a lot of the conversations I have with um, government departments, is that when it comes to data sharing, that it's, it's about the quality of data. So how do we ensure that the quality of data um, is retained when we're when we're sharing it between departments? I think there's a few things, right? Obviously, you can leverage technology. So for example, Databricks leverages ASTID transactions on Delta Lake to ensure expectations of the quality of the data coming into the system. So there's some technical components to it. But again, I think when you start to think about the people and process and you build out processes that that create sort of this symbiotic relationships between the departments, there's almost a self-preservation or a self-need for people to put quality data into the systems because of the dependency of the data that they want to or the insights they want to glean out of that data. And so what I've seen be most successful across organizations and is when they really think about, yes, have technology that en- enables and empowers that and creates the transparency, et cetera, but also make sure that you're thinking about what are the processes where the insights coming out of the data drive the organization toward putting quality data into the system in the first place. And another, I know another challenge I frequently hear about as well is, is when it comes to data standard, Pratesh, which we spoke about uh, earlier in the conversation and kind of figuring out what standard to kind of choose. Um, and also those data quality frameworks as well, uh, all that good stuff is, is really important. So perhaps you could talk us through kind of what are some of the different approaches being taken and how do we decide which ones to use? And yeah, what are you seeing in, in the kind of standard conversations and markets right now? Yeah, look, I, I can see a lot of stuff coming out from cabinet office under the national data strategy banner which is all goodness around uh, especially around the fair data principles you know the acronym standing for findable accessible interoperable and reusable data which you know goes hand in hand with being able to share that data downstream for, for use so uh, th- there is work being done within there in the government the standards data standards authority and, and architecture uh, communities which is kind of proliferating through a number of government departments um, then putting that data quality against that standard you know i was with the department earlier today you know, everyone recognizes that's probably 70, 80% of the work before you start going down to the downstream higher value items about sharing that data or, or doing some more interesting advanced techniques on that data. So I think government is setting those standards as part of the national data strategy and their forums and extensions. We've recently worked together with uh, Ministry of Justice, Imperial College and National Innovation Center for Data around, and Microsoft, uh, our partners at Microsoft as well, around the Splink accelerator from, from Ministry of Justice, which is around data linkage. Right. So knowing that there's there's vast amount of data sources within government on assets and citizens, that that data can be different things in different scenarios. So how do you link that data? How do you know that that thing is the same thing in one side of the department to another? Um, running that through a probabilistic kind of methodology, one can use machine learning to improve data quality um, and then prepare that for sharing downstream knowing that it's a it's a a more quality data record absolutely and another big topic when it comes to data sharing as well as this ethical aspect um before you can do anything with data you have to establish that contract of trust with the public and between government departments um so robin what do you think we can do to really strengthen that data trust and and with whom do we need to build this trust with yeah i think you you even pointed out in in your question right you have to think about uh, creating ethical standards around this data as well and think about how do you resonate that interdepartment between right within your own department i still see sometimes <laughs> ethical questions or issues come up then between departments and then you know external or internationally when you think about the capabilities and then how do you build it with the citizen? And I think a lot of that comes to the ethical application of how you're going to use the data and you have to be open and transparent, I think, in those things. Because when you think about things like, you know, fairness and biases and all of those things that often raise ethical concerns for organizations when it comes down to it having standards and transparency i think alleviates a lot of that um, from their very beginning i remember the early days of data sharing where everybody wanted a data trust a third party neutral party that was going to sort of be the mediator and moderator across these potential dilemmas between organizations but you didn't see very much traction with those because they never could decide on who was going to be the third party entity and i think what we're seeing now is more and more organizations are realizing they're having to build those those trust relationships themselves and think about not just the technology, but how do we make sure that we're creating transparency in the system and creating 
I'm going to tack on my maybe little International Women's Day hat on here since it's coming up coming up in this month. We really need to think about how do you create diversity across your organization it, within your data teams, within your uh, sort of teams that are leveraging the data, gaining the insights, et cetera. Because from my experience and perspective, it's those diverse teams that are going to point out where you potentially have ethical concerns um, or, or ethical issues. So you need to be transparent and open and, and, and be uh, as clear box as possible when it comes to these things, but you have to, at the very foundation, leverage the technology to point out where there are gaps and create diverse teams that are going to let, use the data in a way to point out potential blind spots in, in the in the ethical use of the data sets. Mm. And, and Robin, yeah. if I could build on that, it's also then I think that there's a real power through community, right? Mm. So if you think about the data professionals across government, both in statistics, but also data professionals, uh, architects, and policymakers, bringing together those diverse sets of groups um, and diverse diverse thoughts and backgrounds together to build those communities and networks. And, and I think think he's starting to evolve towards what they're calling marketplace as well, but like a, a government marketplace where it is driven by community as opposed to that third party, you know, who no one is sure about, you know, giving them all the power, giving that power to the community is, is I think, going to have and, and then you have that feedback loop as well. So, so making sure that that community sort of self-governs in a way, right? I think that's going to be the way things are going to go over a period of time as people have more democratized access to a range of tools. Yeah, both really interesting points. And it, it's it's positive to hear that you're kind of seeing that more mature take on, on kind of ethical standards and transparency happening. Um, Robin, even with the kind of diverse teams that you're talking about, and you're kind of seeing government departments kind of take that on themselves, as opposed to kind of waiting for, for someone to, to build that, that um, kind of framework for them. And um, I guess one of the debates we often hear about in data sharing and ethical governance around data is that idea of having kind of having more responsible frameworks is perhaps an obstacle to getting the most from your data. In your opinion, is there a trade-off between responsible data use and effective data use? Um, I personally don't think there, there, there is. I mean, it, you have to... It, it, effective data use has to have responsibility built into it. Otherwise, you essentially kind of open up a bit of a wild, wild west. So it has to be at the forefront of, and, and, and that also goes extends towards the efficiency of that use of data, right? We talked earlier about data quality and standards. So, you know, if you don't build in that responsibility and there's an element of transparency and audibility where it, where applicable, then it stands up to not be useful downstream for the intended purpose. Um, and I think therefore the two kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I think I would agree. What I see is if it's built into the foundations, you don't uh, you restrict the use and or innovation leveraging that data because everybody is sort of aware of what the foundation is and, and what are the frameworks that it's been built upon. And so uh, I, I'm finding that where we often run into issues is where you haven't built out those frameworks and foundations from the very beginning. And then there becomes a little more contention in the system when you think about the use. But typically, if they if you've taken sort of, as Pratesh mentioned, that, that transparent, open approach to the frameworks and foundations, and everyone's aware of what those are, you run into less issues as you come down the road later. I guess kind of expanding on my point, there's, there's, there's kind of policies like the General Data Protection Regulation, which are incredibly important components of privacy law on data. But I guess to what extent is this regulation an obstacle for data sharing? And, and do you hear that people often use it as an excuse to kind of not share data? Um, do you ever see that used as a barrier at all? And if so, how can we kind of tread that line, I guess? Yeah, look, I, I, I've seen, for example, you know, if there's a, a use case where one government department needs to uh, provide a certain level of data and needs to bring that data in from external. It can be, it can seem to be a, a, a long road to trail, especially if it's not mm. seemingly been trailed before. And then the you kind of get sometimes the computer says no element of things. But as I said, it's the first, first and foremost is process element. So making sure that there are effective legal processes in place between the departments and there often is, but people don't know where to look. So I would say some standardization of the legal process framework would be helpful as an enabler to the technology. Uh, so, you know, somewhere where people can go and see which departments have got the right levels of links to do which levels of data sharing, uh, you know, of what sort of assets. I think that sort of information would be very helpful to enable people to sort of say, well, computers right to say no, or actually, computer says no is actually the wrong answer um so i think 
you know, a single place where people can go and search that, that would be probably quite helpful. That's what I've seen. But but again, asking the second or third time is not a bad thing as well, because sometimes there are things already in place. From a process perspective, then then technology shouldn't be the barrier. Absolutely. Um, I think we're seeing an evolution as well of GDPR, right? I mean, if you think of the SHREMS 2 and decisions that are being made recently around implementation, I think what originally people were very afraid of how much that was going to be a barrier to data sharing or data innovation and leveraging those things. What I think we're seeing over time is that there's almost a citizen demand for Mm -hmm. for some level of data sharing to deliver better services and products. If you think about it, how often do you get frustrated when you go to your GP and you have to re-explain the same thing because they can't get an x-ray from another component of the hospital? (laughs) I think citizens are going to start to to almost be a forcing function in the direction of data sharing and openness so that it delivers better services and and, uh, capabilities for them. Really interesting, yeah. So once people are seeing the benefits of it, they're going to want to see more of it and they're going to be less hostile towards it, definitely. Um, And I want to talk about perhaps some of the cultural and organizational barriers to the effective use of data in government. Firstly, perhaps kind of what are some of these barriers that you're seeing? And then perhaps if you could maybe offer some advice or tips in terms of how departments can help drive kind of more of a cultural maturity around um, data use and, and data sharing. Yeah, foundationally, my whole career was really data culture Uh, at at Microsoft. If you think about it, I didn't own the technology platform at all. It was all about how do we empower the people and drive the the different processes and build literacy and all of those things that go with culture. And so I think some uh, um, departments within the government are probably more mature than others. I think everyone is thinking about that. Like, how do we create data literacy? How do we empower the uh, employees to actually think about the data they have access to, the data they need access to, to be more effective or efficient. Uh, And and so I I, I think across the departments, we see varying levels of maturity. However, I think when you ground it into, don't forget that when you change, when you implement a change like this, uh, it, it, it requires change management, which makes sure, right, you need to make sure that you're attaching to the employees and the citizens and what are the outcomes that you're looking to drive and what are the barriers that prevent that and and really grounding on making it matter when you, uh, as you think about shifting a culture. And so I agree to account the, the people and process behind it as well. And Pritesh, did you want to add anything on that point? Yeah, sure. So just, just to build on the, the demand pieces driving that data culture change, I think, both within departments, um, uh, both extending from citizens and within departments. And what you're seeing, therefore, is is the need to evolve what they're providing to each other, uh, almost like a, a an internal operating model or contract um, between parts of organizations to share data in a certain way. Expectations are increasing all the time, whilst data volumes are increasing all the time. So the, the, the build-up is 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 great as we talked about the top of the call for demand and, and opportunity and value and that's driving a, a, i can see a material change in the way people want to interact now what we need to do is make sure that change is accessible to everyone as as robin alluded to so how can we walk to people who have maybe you know spent a, a, a fair amount of time as statistical analysis in languages like r but also analysts that have you know dealt with sql or excel for example so this is the interoperability part or involving Mm -hmm. people with different uh skills and and those advanced as well you know bringing everyone along for the ride is a key part of this as well Uh, Mm -hmm. and i'm seeing government departments being conscious of that yeah and that's certainly something i hear a lot about which is really nice it's that phrase make sure you bring everyone along for the ride it's such a key key cultural point because of course you can't you can't do it unless unless everyone's doing it with you um so yeah really interesting points there um and I wanted to get your your thoughts on another point. So we've talked a lot about sharing between government departments and also with the public systems. Um, but how do we share data effectively between UK government to industry and then international? So what other considerations do we need to think about when we're when we're looking at this piece particularly? Um, Robin, perhaps you want to start us off. Yeah, I think the examples we talked about earlier, we're definitely seeing more opportunity, I think, between pu- public and private entities. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think citizens are almost asking for those things, um, right? So I know everybody wants to 
not remember the pandemic. However, during the pandemic, uh, lots of citizens were willing to give up their health care data if it would prioritize them for grocery delivery. And so you would never, I think, pre-pandemic have thought about health data being given to a, uh, you know, a grocer to be able to then think about those those types of opportunities. But what that did uncover was there are secure ways to share this data across those that benefit uh, benefit the citizen or the customer or the consumer. And so mm-hmm. I think we'll continue to see more and more of those evolve as, as people gain value out of those types of innovations that can happen. Uh, I, I think the sharing of data between government entities internationally um, uh, becomes a little more complex as you think about the ecosystems and the and the constraints that often uh, exist there. However, Pratesh, you know, mentioned it earlier, making sure that you have the right legal frameworks, making sure that you have the right usage frameworks, you have the right sort of transparency in those things. I, I think the opportunity exists. I think it, it will probably be slower moving than mm-hmm. what we'll see between public and private. Uh, Pratesh, uh, I would love to hear your... Yeah, yeah I was going to say, gonna say like um, you mentioned the pandemic, I'm going to ma- mention Brexit, right? So <laughs> I think that's made UK government think about okay, um, what does what do we want to get out of you know an evolution of GDPR? That means that we maintain some of the the principles that are core to it, which I think most recognise are needed around privacy and, and, and intended use, but at the same time not be constrained uh, to, to open up opportunity in markets, uh, but for trading. Uh, purposes for promoting development within business so so the government's asking themselves these hard questions and thinking okay so how do we want to boost uh supply chains trade you know supply chains are, are quite prevalent right now i can't get peppers from my local supermarket right so that's something that is because of the pinch point of supply chains and and data can help drive better insight where you can make these decisions so there's a lot of economic value and opportunity within allowing flow of data responsibly across borders and across industries and sectors as well and i think uk government is seeing that in in mission five and recognizing it as mission five of the national data strategy but the the question now is doing some engagement with almost those users in in trade who are going through a transformation of systems and and use of an interaction with uk systems and and trying to come out with something might be better and unparalleled compared to other countries and make it easier to do trade with the uk but that's great that kind of already we're starting to see those important economic kind of values that can be derived from from data sharing just around the points that you mentioned it's um it's all kind of positive strides in the right direction i guess and i know we are coming come, kind of coming up to the end of our time but um i just want to get your your thoughts on on one last thing if you have i guess any top tips or kind of key data responsibilities that you can flag it'll help organizations to deliver sustainable data sharing programs i guess designed to to best navigate the challenges and opportunities in, in government, if you have any top tips, um, Robin, I'll, I'll come to you first. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, building the foundation with technology, but don't forget the people in process, uh, right? You, you you definitely don't want to create a field of dreams where you build this amazing technical platform that allows for data sharing, but no one uses it. And so definitely keep in mind a holistic program as you're pulling these things together uh, and the outcomes you want to drive for your organization. Pretty good one. Uh, and and for, my, uh, yeah, for, for myself, I, I've seen you know the power that building these data communities can bring right so i, I encourage government to do that we, we were lucky enough to participate recently i said through national data strategy forum as well that is starting to foster communication and, and show best practice i think the power that these communities can drive is is more powerful than most other things really um showing best practice showing the art of the possible sharing that with others taking that feedback loop of what's working what could be better i think that that really ultimately is going to be contribute to a, an evolution that is something to something that's really exciting. And yeah, I mean, two fantastic tips to, to end on. So ensuring that we share kind of all the knowledge that we can with with everyone in the community and, and making sure that no one gets left behind. Um, and unfortunately, we have come up against time, but thank you so much for your, your time and insights. And for our listeners, you can look forward to hearing more from Robin and Pratesh at our Data Government Summit on the 30th of March, where Databricks will be sharing all of their knowledge and insights and top tips around responsible data sharing then so thank you both so much thank you sam thank you thank you robin